the second error uh, is a consideration of outward freedom versus interior freedom. Returning to Frankel, he discovered his interior and true freedom was independent of external circumstances. We, of course, can and should remedy those painful restrictions as we are able. But there always comes a point when we can do no more. There always is. Um, if our freedom is determined by some other entity, some other boundary, then we'll always be enslaved. Um, the 2020 lockdowns and abuses are a recent example. We should have vigorously oppose illegal and to say something's unconstitutional that's a synonym for um, being illegal uh, so unconstitutional actions by those in power and I'm very much involved with that issue but there comes a point and that varies in in different locales and with different situations when nothing more can be done we still have the choice to rely on the goodness of God's fatherly care and thereby retain our freedom. Yeah, I think that, you know, if anything, you know, please God, let it be that this is something of a wake up call to people in America of just how vulnerable exterior freedoms are to a totalitarian who longs to, to control, right? I mean, and, and certainly we know that we don't live you know, in a world that is simply flesh and blood, but we are dealing with principalities and powers. And so consequently, not only do we have to know as Christians that God is, as he said before, the giver and the guarantor of this beautiful gift of interior freedom, right? We know that Satan has bound himself and consequently longs for everyone to be bound. If Satan, I mean, he he is the worst of of you know, criminals, as it were, because if he's in prison, he he demands that everyone else be in prison with him, even if he's in prison by his own foolhardiness. And so consequently, we have to be cognizant of that, that those exterior freedoms are are vulnerable to the prince of the world. And he, you know, is he is the prince of the world. That's right. That's right. That's right. Liberation or suicide is the next era that father considers. And here is another uh, rampant uh, concern in our society is transhumanism. Yeah. It's rampant. And many thought leaders promote the idea if humanity could just shed the shackles of our biology, flesh. Yep. our flesh, then man will be free. Yep. Uh, gender choice right. or, and Father, God bless his courage, he brings up extreme sports. Yeah. are both cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Hence the coupling of suicide to liberation. Yeah. And that, you know, I mentioned earlier with, with Hemingway. How many yeah. deaths and lifelong mutilations or injuries are a direct result of this false understanding of freedom found within ourselves yeah. um, as opposed to that founded on a loving relationship with God? This right. lack of love restricts our hearts and is the root of our lack of freedom. A lack of love, going back to that uh, first, um, if you will, equation, uh, to, to the poor proportion we are interiorly free is faith, um, hope, and charity, faith, hope, and love. And so um, a lack of love is directly tied to a lack of faith and a lack of hope because they go to they, they ball together. Yeah, and I mean, you, you see that, that you see that constant desire, like the, um, was, it the was it the Stoics? Who were the ones who were entirely opposed to the body, right? And so what that led them to was two, two seemingly contrarily different ends, right? One absolute licentiousness and dip Archery, right? You could do whatever you wanted with the body, you know, seeking whatever pleasures that you wanted because the body had no exterior purpose. Or on the other side, which seems to be its absolute antithesis, suicides, right? That you would that you would kill yourself. But really, they're not they're not actually opposites in so much as they are flip sides of the same coin. 
because they are they it's it's that difference of what is the golden mean right of aristotle where where freedom is in the center and you know rampant choice to abject debauchery or control over your over your life through death right i mean it's not not control over your life i mean it's just ending your life but you think that this gives you some kind of control the truth of both of those things is going to reside somewhere in the middle that you love life because of death right you you protect it and you admire it and at the same token you don't go to the extremes of of orgies or debauchery or or shame shameful sexuality right because you admire the beauty of of the flesh and that's really where we have to find ourselves that is going to be where that, that where that authentic freedom that God has created with us is going to reside not between those two extremes but rather in the appreciation of what those two extremes tell us about truth that's right a second a fourth error he's going to a father will uh, characterize as uh, freedom in action choosing or consenting freedom is often so in our mind we have an idea that freedom is often measured by a large number of choices now this is okay if we're talking about canned tomatoes you know <laughs> but indecision is also a choice with consequences so he's going to come back to making a vocational choice um, many young people today and i understand how they have come to this point but nonetheless there's a cost to it many young people fear greatly making a lifelong commitment they fear it however time such as an old age or sickness will make a choice and the ability to truly and freely live in this notion of choice slips away from that person consenting to that what one did not choose and so i'll i'll, I'll say that again because it's it, it's really a, i think a little it's a, a rock in the gears when you consent to that which you did not choose mm -hmm. that is interior freedom right. we consent and so what would we be consenting to that we don't choose our weaknesses our health our limitations and not in that, and he, he will quickly point out, and St. Therese is going to point that out, or Sister Faust, St. Faustina. So we're not, talk, we're not trying to give a pass on sloth here. We're just taking an honest, true assessment of ourselves and saying we, are, we do have limitations. Our minds do wander, and we do um, have our health problems. And we do have mental uh, uh, constraints that, other, you know, what would be Teresa of Avila. She was a melancholic, right? Okay. So the temperaments, that sort of thing. And we don't choose that. That's, in, in some real sense, it is imposed upon us. And we consent to it. And that's mm -hmm. not transhumanism. Trans Humanism would be, you know, the the monkeying with our DNA, the merging of ourselves to AI or right. um, animals. Right. And all of that, my friends, is here now. That right. that kind of that kind of work. Um, so I know that this past year. I profoundly grew in my interior freedom, even though I was most um, definitely enslaved in a number of ways um, I never could have thought possible. But I didn't, I didn't feel trapped, or at least I didn't stay in that trapped state because, you know, that reliance on God. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say that, you know, when you... When you, you, you can't dig deep enough in the well of despair that you won't keep finding hope at the bottom, right? <laughs> you know, God is so good. It's the, it's the concept. Even even the Greeks understood that, the, the story of Pandora's box, right? All these great diseases and terrible things come flying out of the box. And when she looks inside of it, all that she has left is hope. 
because they recognize that that is such, I mean, it really, it's actually a very beautiful movement of, of the Greek intellect that allowed them to realize that no matter how bad things get, the human intellect can permit for the imagination to foresee or to see something better that could come. That, that, that movement towards hope is, is the profound gift that our Lord has, has provided to the human person. And that's where you really see that, that that must be something foundational within natural law, because the Greeks were able to discover that with that Pandora. The, Victor Frankl, even though he was raised in the Jewish tradition, is able to find that in his atheism through suffering. Right. I mean, I, I don't know how Victor Frankl died in the terms of like whether or not he he re embraced um, any sense of, of divinity. But he still was able to recognize that hope is foundational to the human person. Right? That's correct. That's exactly right. All right, my friends, till the next time. Fides. Erratio.